Jones for the end zone touchdown on Parker. Rick off by Xavier Howard. What is good, Finn Nation? What is good? It has been a minute. I missed all of y'all so very much. It's been a rough couple weeks. Your boy looking like he's on that that 24-hour keto diet turnaround. Um, we out here, man. I missed all of y'all so much, man. Like To tell y'all how good it feels just to be sitting back here. In front of the camera, I almost got tears in my eyes. I missed it so much uh, because I love doing this. You know, I love, you know, bringing the news to you guys and everything you guys, all the reach outs in terms of text messages, DMs, calls. I truly love each and every one of you so, so very much. Thank you so much for tuning back in and sticking with me, man. Uh, You know, all I could think about was getting the news to you guys as quickly as I could, man. You know, I I missed y'all so, so very much. Almost literally almost got tears in my eyes, guys. It's been a rough, rough couple weeks, man. But your boy made it. Um, You know, I've just been dealing with some serious, serious health issues. No, I didn't have the vid, you know, literally wiping away tears, guys. I missed y'all so much. Um, I mean, you know, y'all are my family, and I missed y'all. Um, uh, you don't know how much joy I get doing this for all of y'all. Um, and that so many of y'all support me and, you know, we've come, you know, not even a year and we're almost hitting 3000 subscribers and it's just been, uh, man, I just love y'all so much. Um, I missed all of y'all and I'm just so, so happy to be back in front of this for y'all. Um, it's been it's been crazy, man. It's been it's been crazy. Um, thank you to Rhino, you know, Damien, um, Powerhouse. Shout out to the homie EM Dolphin fan. Love you, homie. Um, you know, we've all been y'all have been y'all have got me some some pretty dark times lately. Um, me and EM had a very good conversation a couple hours conversation a couple nights ago and I miss the homie so much, and, uh, you know, it's just uh, good to see everything be put back in this perspective for me, and, um, you know, I'm just glad to be back, man. Glad to be back. Glad to be back in front of you guys. appreciate the donations already coming through. Drew Brew, appreciate the $5 donation, man. Um, Much love, dude. Um, Shout out to Rhino, you know, off of that. That's not reason. Who is that? Go Fins. Um... Yeah, I just can't explain how much I missed y'all. I really can't. So, man, it's just, uh, it's not normal. You know, y'all, y'all part of my daily routine. Um, This is part of my daily routine. And it was just not, it was not, it was not normal not being around you guys and seeing you guys and, you know, feeling, vibing off that energy that you guys consistently give. Um, I'm not going to go into the exact details of what went down with me um, in terms of health wise. Um, you know, I had been diagnosed a couple years ago with something, um, and it was misdiagnosed. I went and found out obviously through this past couple weeks, um, we got a lockdown, figured out what it was. Um, it's a new day. Um, you know, it's bright, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, it's nothing but shining in front of me, man. It's, 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 it's a beautiful day, man. It's uh 2021 back started off with a bang we'll be back to the finish line this week um you know uh i talked to the ball homie ball game today um you know talked to the homie richmond um shout out to richmond web um so man it's just so good to be back guys but let's get into it all right so the conversation right now is we got you know a lot of people are thrown back or aside by the fact that you know um, shout out to you, Josh. We all love you and appreciate you. Thank you, man. The family is doing well. 
yes, man. Um, you gotta get, gotta give props to Mama Reason. Um, well, no, sorry, Wifey Reason. Uh, Mama Reason has been helping out, but Wifey Reason, my wife has been holding it down, holding the fortress down, like a real queen. You know, that's what a queen is, man. So, I love you. I appreciate you. Um, you're my forever love. Love you to the end of the universe and back, baby. Thank you so much. Um, so here we go. So a lot of the talk today has been, obviously, with George Gotze and Eric Studesville. Now, I want to say I kind of hinted at this because I was right about the Senior Bowl. And, guys, I'll have videos this week. I'm going to have a video about the Senior Bowl coming out uh, tomorrow and then – uh, either tomorrow, Thursday, and then I'll get that free agency video after, and then we'll be here for the Super Bowl on Sunday. Just a quick update. But all right, so let's keep on topic here. George Gossie and Eric Studesville, there's a lot of people up in arms that we didn't name someone. First thing I want to say to everyone is look at our candidates. Look at the list that came out. Ken Dorsey was nothing more than a rumor. That was a pipe dream we all wanted, right? Pep Hamilton was the only one that did not get promoted, right? And I would have been fine with Pep. That would have been cool. I'm down with Pep. That's fine. But Pep Hamilton was the only one that wasn't promoted. And that got a job somewhere else. So every other, like every external candidate we've looked at, guys, they're off the list. So, you know, what did I say to you guys, you know, before I got six? You go back to that last video, uh, 172. What did I suggest? I gave you all the theory. What if they're going to run Studesville and Godsey as co-coordinators for the Senior Bowl? And what happened? What happened? Your boy was right, okay? Your boy was right. I pitched it. I, I was on to it. I felt it. It was right, all right? And now they've taken it even further. Now, I want people to realize something. I think we get stuck too much on Brian Flores maybe being – too much of a, you know, you hear a defensive minded coach, all of a sudden he must not know anything about offense, which is the furthest thing from the truth. Because if you're a defensive minded coach, I mean, you've seen and prepared for every offense at every level. You know how to beat every offense at every level. So you almost become a nitpicker, right? How can I create an offense that even I would have problems beating? And, you know, a lot of people just forget the title. Don't worry about an offensive coordinator, guys. I'm telling you right now, you're going to see last year we talked about how Brian Flores, he really wanted to pay attention to Boyer and the defensive side of the ball and getting the defense in his vision to where he wanted up to his standards, okay? This year we've talked about through free agency in the draft, they're going to build – the offense that they want to build, right? Well, all he's doing, guys, is Eric Studesville is your run game coordinator. That's fine. That's fantastic. George Godsey is the passing game coordinator. And this is what people need to start here. I think they're going to be handled as, yeah, you're co-offensive coordinators, but really you're a passing coordinator and a run coordinator that's what it's gonna be I'm telling you right now because it's not set in stone if you saw the cam article today it's not set in stone of who's gonna call plays yet so i truly think what you're gonna be dealing with is studesville because here's the thing you know a lot of people believe that in game preparation and installs that oh it's one guy you know he wants to do this he wants to do that he wants to do this he picks that that's not how it works man what you do is it's a collaborative effort from your offensive coaching staff, right? It's a collaborative effort. And then from there, the, de the you go out and you practice it against the defense. The defense can pick – the defensive coaching staff can now come in and sit down with your collaborative team and pick it apart and say, okay, this is how we found we could beat it in practice, da 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 da, da. This is what you need to iron out. And I think that's what you're going to see. I think you're going to see a committee this year. And I'm actually all for it. I am all for collaborative effort because Charlie Fry is the key here, guys. Not a single person. And Charlie Fry and Godsey, I mean, guys, to a dealt. I mean, go back, what, 
2017-2018, Michael Loxley was the co-offensive coordinator for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Right? Two has already done this. Don't you see, guys? They're doing stuff the quarterback is comfortable with. They are playing to their quarterback strengths, however that may be. And I think Godsey is the guy. We go back. You know, he was a passing game coordinator. He took over the duties from Robbie Brown um, in the Arizona game, and he never gave him back. And I think that's it's now going to be a collaborative effort. And Flores wants this offense. I think you're going to see Flores focus more on the offensive side of the ball this season as a coach. I think that's the idea. I want to mold these guys in my vision of what I want this offense to look like. And here's another thing. Guys, when you hire an offensive coordinator and they do good, what do they have? A two-year shelf life? We've extended that. We've added an extra year because we've said, hey, this is a committee year, and then next year we can make a decision, and then we can get another. So you can get three years of God's here, Studesville. You can get three years of that consistency. Now, we're the good thing, too, is the consistency carrying over from last year to this year. Terminology isn't going to change because, guys, y'all don't understand how complicated – Offensive ter- terminology is. It's very, very complicated. And being able to keep that in-house, keep that consistent for your quarterback, that is a very, very big thing. And great, great work. Um, you know, they brought in Charlie Fry, who's very familiar with Tua. We go back to the Elite 11 days, right? How fantastic did he work with Tua at the Elite 11? Tua loved him. They had a fan dead, one of the best relationships. Trent Dilfer's talked about how good their relationship was. And, you know, you got to sit here, man. You know, Charlie Fry, he's going to understand, you know, offensive coordinator, Central Michigan, now promoted. He's going to understand how to craft plays around this quarterback. We have someone in the building we didn't have last year. We have someone that knows and understands the strengths and skill set of our quarterback. We didn't have that. You cannot underestimate the value of that connection and that relationship. I'm telling you, they're they're gonna. You know, who was Tua's coach when Tua won the Elite Eleven in that seven and seven title? That was Charlie Fry, guys. You know, and from everything I've read and understood, Charlie Fry is considered one of the best teachers and communicators around. And that is a very, very big pot. You know, Brian Flores is absolutely salivating at that. You know, he is. That is fantastic stuff, guys. And now you're continuing the chemistry and the bond that he already had. With Godsey and Studesville. I know we always talk about, you know, Studesville, uh, Godsey's relationship, sorry. But, you know, you got to think they have a relationship too. And, you know, Godsey sat with Tua on every drive. You know, he was a one on one guy with Tua. Now you got another one on one guy they brought in with Fry. And, guys, I'm just saying, it is not as bad as it seems. This team knows their quarterback and they know what they're doing. I actually really, really like this hire. I really like this idea. Telltale sign. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Martin Ukepi. Telltale sign that Greer and Flores, they're all in, guys. Dead the Watson stuff. All right? It's over. I'm telling you, it's not happening. I'll tell you right now. It's not happening. Charlie Fry was me saying they're in on Tua. This is, it's over. Watson is not going to be a Miami Dolphin. And I'm going to show you why Watson is not going to be a Miami Dolphin. Great, great piece came out today. And not enough people are talking about it. I don't know why. Fantastic stuff from the Bleacher Report today. Let's talk about it. NFL execs telling teams no on Watson, leaving QB to make his next move. 
Let's go right here. I want to scroll down right down. There's a piece I want right here. Let's go right here. Okay. Is this trade pursuit even remotely realistic? One NFL general manager said that he hasn't heard anything from Houston that makes him think Watson will be traded. And he suggested this is mainly a media-driven story. Guys, what have I been saying? According to two high-level executives from different teams in the quarterback market, Texans brass have told interested teams that they will not be having any conversations about trading Watson. And these are teams in the quarterback market, guys. Quote, we've been told no from them directly, one of the executives said. Interested teams are putting plans together, he continued, but I don't think the Texans are listening. It's Houston right now, he said. They don't have any rhyme or reason on what they've done over the last year and a half in terms of what's going on with all this leadership and all this mess going on. But I'm telling you guys, I don't think they're trading them. Yes, everyone has a price like it says here. Of course, everyone in the world has a price. Come on. Any player in any professional sport has a price. All right? I mean, that's nothing new. If you're a sports fan, if you're a business, you know, if you know business whatsoever, of course. Of course, everything has a price. I mean, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase made a living off that. Everybody's got a price. All right? but. I'm telling you right now, people, I've been saying this from A, people don't understand how highly we value the draft capital. Flores wants to build a team in his vision. Listen, let me take a swig here, guys. Here's your thing. People don't understand. I, I, I don't know why they don't. People have all of a sudden forgot it. I mean, when did Russell win it? The first five years of a rookie quarterback are so essential because of the money. The money. When you have a four-year plus a fifth-year option deal, you have the ability in those five years to put as many blue-chip prospects through the draft or free agency pieces that you feel fill the needs to get you over the hump in those five years to create a team before your quarterback hits over 17% of your cap. That is fundamental, people. That is fundamental to win or to teach. I kept telling y'all, you teach the quarterback how to win in the first five years, doesn't mean necessarily the Super Bowl. I mean, AFC Championship, et cetera, et cetera. You teach him how what it is to be a winner. So when he gets to get paid, right, after, when that sixth, seventh year hits, now that money's hitting the bank, he can shoulder more weight, more responsibility, so you can alleviate money in different areas, okay, with more cost-effective, cost-efficient guys. That's how you win. That's how you build a consistent dynasty. People are out here like Brady was taking 40, 50 million a year. No. Why did that last so long? Because of the money that they spent and how they spent it. They only made splashes on like who? Randy Moss? Like, you know what I mean? You need to build a winner or the foundation of a winner for after year five and year six. And the only way you can do that is getting the first five years of the quarterback contract right. That's the only way. And people are forgetting this. People are absolutely forgetting it. And I don't, I don't understand. I really don't. And I'm telling you right now, Deshaun Watson will not be a Miami Dolphin. He won't be. I don't want to hear pushback about it. I don't want to hear nonsense about it. You can have your opinion. 
You can have your hope. That's fine. Who am I to say you not to hope if you want that player? Go ahead. But I'm telling you, don't. I'm just telling you this so you don't get disappointed. Because when hopes get risen, so does the level of disappointment when those hopes aren't met. I'm telling you right now, guys, it's going to be Pene Suell or Devontae Smith at three. And Deshaun Watson will not be in my. I heard that. Uh, I just got a, an update about uh, 45 minutes ago. The Vegas Raiders are trying to put away, put together a three way package right now. For I'll bring it up right now. Let's bring it up. Raiders are trying to bring a three way package for Watson right now. Apparently, uh, with with Derek Carr. Um. So. And I'll just bring it up right now for you guys. You can see it's it's not happening, guys. Uh, like, and I don't know why everyone's so eager to get off a young young contract and a young prospect with a high ceiling for a guy who's reaching his well in his prime. I get it, but it comes with that kind of price tag. I don't get it because he doesn't. Yes, he makes us better day one. But I can't sit here and say to you, he makes us better over the long term. I can't. No one can. No one can. That's No one can sit here and make a three, four year projection. And if they do, they're lying to you and they're just letting, and they're letting their feelings get in the way or their emotion. So right now, right now, apparently, Vincent. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Of the Las Vegas Review Journal reports that several NFL insiders expect the Raiders to field calls regarding quarterback Derek Carr. And Bogusier suggests that the expected demand for Carr could result in a three team trade that would result in the Raiders trading. See, again, it's hypothetical, right? It's just guys want to put themselves on the sexy to be attached, you know? The source seems to be confusing. Come on. So I just, you know, this guy's going to be floating around. I don't want this nonsense. I'm too focused, you know. And I got to say this. Shout out to my quarterback. I love you, Tua. Shout out to my quarterback for coming out yesterday and handling it with su like such a gentleman. How can you not love this kid? How can you not want this kid to succeed? Look at how he handles these. Dumb questions from, oh, oh, you know, I was going to get a Tua Tug of a lower jersey, but should I wait till August? Why are you even asking that, Patrick? What a, what a shoddy journalistic question. Like, that was such a, such a low ball question, man. Like, absolutely disgusting when I watched that. I'm like, come on, man. Give the kid a freaking break. His agents, his agents, clearly getting him out here to put his face in front of people because everyone wants to know with what's going on with this Sean nonsense. And Dan Patrick asked that absolutely god awful question, absolutely a shame, shut a shameful journalism on you, man. Oh, that's all I gotta say to you on that. That was a, I uh, just not a fan of that question. Shout out to Marino's goat, man. Uh, let me hit that. Let me bring that up for you, buddy. Shout out to you, homie. Uh, $20 donation. Appreciate you, my guy. He says, welcome back. Fins up, man. I love it, man. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. But yeah, I was just like, you know, that was just an awful, like such poor taste. Like just such poor taste to ask that. Like, you know what I mean? You know, and to bring up the Joe's going to buy it to you. Should I wait till August? Like, what do you think he's going to say to you, dude? Come on. Like, use your fucking brain. What do you think he's going to say to you? What do you think he's going to say to you? Oh, yeah, wait till August. I may be on another. Like, such poor journalism, man. Jesus Christ. If this guy can get a job, I'll be working for ESPN in two or three years. It was just, you know, just need to calm down. <laughs> Um, shout out to everyone in the comments right now. Um, uh, but you know, 
I want to go back on this Godsey thing. I, I'm a fan of it, guys. I'm actually a fan of the committee thing because it takes as it, you know as an offensive coaching staff, you do your installs and you you know you set up your game plan. It's not one guy sitting there game planning. It doesn't work like that. It's already a committee. So I think this is just you know I think this is just this is just fine. I think this is fantastic stuff. I mean, I I can't I can't find a reason not to like it. I mean, we're just it, the cohesiveness is still there, you know. The continuality is still there, you know. The terminology, which is a huge thing, it's look look at this. Let me pose this to you: What if Tua has a better year than Herbert this year? Huh? 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 Coach, no coaching staff turnover, influx of weapons, influx of money spent on the offense, personnel brought in who's personally attached to the player to make him better. I'm just sitting here saying, I'm just sitting, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Gotta ask yourself that question. That's a legitimate question. That is an actually legitimate question. And let's be honest, we got a better team. We got a better coach. I don't care what they say over there, bro. The only the only coaching hire that really impressed me this offseason, because I don't know what the Eagles did. Jesus, good God almighty. But the that Robert Sala, that that and Lafleur, that's a fantastic hiring. The Jets are gonna. The AFC East is about to be a powerhouse to powerhouse division in a couple of years, people. For real, for real, and I think they're gonna take uh, if they're going quarterback, because I have heard that they checked in on Deshaun Watson. I think it's gonna be Zach Wilson. I don't think it's gonna be Justin Fields. Zach Wilson fits that offense a whole hell of a lot better. Um, than what Justin Fields will. Um, so I, I think, I think, you know, but I think the Jets are further behind than we are. That's the problem for them. Like they're behind us. Like I think they're going to be on the the heels of us in the Bills, but they're behind in terms of assets, building their deep. You know where they are. Their defense is nowhere. Like they got a couple years until, but they're on the right track. I told y'all I love Joe Douglas. I think he's a fantastic GM. I think he did a great, great job um, in hiring. Um, and, uh, you know, hiring the first Arab Muslim head coach, rightfully so. He's so deserving. I, I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be really good. Um, you know, but that's in a couple years. You know, I think the Jets, I think, you know, what you see in terms of, um, you know, we, we expected KC. Um, the Raiders and Denver to take that leap, you know, and be the, you know, three out of one division or like an AFC North with the, with, you know, the Browns, um, you know, um, the Steelers and such, you know, I think we're the next, we're going to be like that too. So I think it's going to be, uh, the West, the North and the East are going to be, uh, are going to be hard, 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 hard places to win in. Yeah, in the AFC for the next couple of years, I really do. But the Jets just—they're going to take a couple of years, but they're on the right path. They're on the right track. You, you can't hate. So you can't hate. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think uh, you know. I, I think that Sean Watson stuff, guys. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be putting my eggs in that basket. I wouldn't be putting my eggs in that basket because. And I know a lot of people want to talk about it because there's not a lot to talk about right now. But, you know, you can only talk about it so much, man. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Nico, uh, 299, good to see you back, homie. Appreciate you. One of my first first true friends in this community, Nico. I love you, homie. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. Um, I love you, man. I uh, appreciate you um, for sticking around, dude. Um, let's drop some links. Let's, uh, let's hear from you guys. We're hitting that 30-minute mark. Uh, I've said what I got to say a little bit, um, and I'll let you guys come in, hear what you guys got to say. I'm sure I'll have stuff to say based off what you guys got to say, so we'll go there. 
Appreciate you, Ronald, man. Thank you very much, homie. Hope you're doing well, Ron. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, here's the thing. Would I be mad if they traded for Watson? I wouldn't be happy, but they're my team. I, I don't turn on my logo because they trade for a player, um, you know, unless the player is like a Chad Wheeler or something like that. Then, yeah, we got a problem. Um, then I'm not a fan at all. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't, um, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, I'll hit, you know, it, it makes me or breaks me whether they trade for Watson. I just don't think it's going to happen. Logic just doesn't. I think they're moving forward too. I think the Charlie Fry hire and now the co coordinators, I think that shows that they're all in on Tua, which I already tried to tell y'all. Flores was talking about with his development. Rhino, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm Rhino Sith. Nice to meet you. Who are you? <laughs> hey, brother. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm easing because I lost the R. Yeah. Easing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to get your thoughts, brother, because I know we were talking, you know, you're kind of in the middle on this. Um, what do you think about going with two coordinators? He's either going to strike out for the third time or he's going to be a genius. Flores. Um, my only hesitation is that two times he's kind of come up a little short, but uh, just sitting here listening to you, my thoughts went to maybe the preseason will decide who may end up actually getting the regular season play calling duties. That's the only, I mean, because how, how do you make in-game adjustments? Who decides what place to call? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Are we going to run? Are we going to pass? Yeah, I think it's good. So this is my – I think basically Flores is going to oversee it over uh, the offense and passing game coordinator, running game coordinator, just glorified titles with co-offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. And then they come with a collaborative effort. You set your game plan and you call plays. And, you know, I think you're going to see guys – I think you're going to see them rotating. I think they're going to take, they're going to go through, you know, they're going to rotate the duties of calling plays in game. And you know what I love, Rhino? Mm. They're going to be on the fucking field, brother. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, Josh, Damien, how are you hey, guys Josh, doing? Damien. What's good? Fans up, guys. Fans up. Doing great. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? What do you guys, what do you got, what are you guys thinking about this whole thing? You want to go first, Josh, or? Uh, sure. Um, so based on what the coaching staff have been saying, like throughout the season and um, after the Buffalo game, I already thought that um, for the most part, we were going to keep Tua because you look at what Gurr said, Tua is going to be our starter in 2021. We're looking forward to see his um, second year development, you know, and they said if he, you know, continues to work on the things like his footwork and, you know, all that, then and pick, pick up where he left off, then we're going to be happy with him. So with everything that they've said, like, it's just already been a writing on a wall that we were most likely going to keep him. But then when you hire Charlie Fry and, you know, hire George Gotsy and then, you know, um, Eric, it, it just shows further that they are just very committed to him, which I think is the right approach. And, you know, I agree with you because here's the thing. A lot of people are forgetting – this might be the new wave of the NFL, guys. We might be dealing with the new wave here. And what I mean by that is, dude, look at what Shanahan does, okay? You know, think of it. The Rams coaching structure, you know, the Rams coaching structure prior to Waldron had a run coordinator, a pass coordinator, an offensive coordinator. You know, they did that under McVay. You go look at what Shanahan did. What has Shanahan done? Shanahan. Yeah, he's offensive coordinator, but again, what has he done? McDaniel and LaFleur under him, right? Bucks, Arians, Godwin, Leftwich, Chiefs, Reed, Bienemy, Kafka. Like, there's a trend going on here, guys, where mm -hmm. the head coach is taking two guys and making them his co his coordinators. One's a run, one's offense. Uh, sorry, one's run, one's pass. This is like a wave that's going on that... I think we're just blown by because we're the first team that announced our hires looking like that. Mm -hmm. You know, usually everything fell into place like that, right? 
Like, okay, you hired Mike Shanahan. He's the off. He's going to hire offensive play calls, but then he's going to have his coordinators in place. Flores is doing the same, and I think it's just now he's going to move from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball, and he wants to show everyone this is the vision, like in terms of internally, this is the vision I want for this offense. You guys make it happen together as a collaborative effort. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Ramon Casillas for the ten dollar donation. He said, "I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us. We missed all of you. I missed all of you so much, guys." <laughs> um, but okay, let's keep going. Um, Damien, let's get your thoughts on it. Fans up, first of all, man. Good to have you back, my brother. Have <laughs> Appreciate you. to be back, man. For guy. sure. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic about it, man. Um, first of all, the Charlie Fry hiring. That's big, that's big time and key. I'm sure he's going to implement a lot of stuff also as well. Um, but the familiarity that Tua has with Godsey and Studsville is, is key. He's worked mm-hmm. with both of these guys last season. Godsey even more in depth. Um, I can see, like what you said, I can really see them maybe rotating like the play calling responsibility. Or, I mean, with them two like working together, having a familiarity with each other, it could just go in game, you know, both of them, you know, just, you know, in certain degrees of the game, you know, well, okay, well, we like we could be trailing and Gossie could take over more to play call because we're trailing. Or when we're mm-hmm. up with the lead, Studsville come in, you know, and, and control, you know, the play call as far as, you know, a run-based play, you know, run-based scheme, you know, with, with passes sprinkled in. And the same vice versa. I, I really see it working out well and we i mean like you you and you like you hinted you know with kansas city with with kafka and the enemy and andy reed or anywhere think about think about that green base staff when you had homegrown as the coach but andy reed steve mariucci yeah. all those guys on there like you know so i mean i'm pretty sure this has this has happened numerous times before it's just a coach coming out and announcing yeah. co-coordinators so i i think the transition is going to be smooth. I love it that they kept it in house, and they're doing everything possible to give this kid a comfortable, a comfortable, a comfortable um way to go. Like you know, he's, everything's comfortable. All they got to do is just put the, the skill position players in place now, because as far as the, you know, the offense and the language in the offense is all going to be the same for him, man. So I'm optimistic and I'm happy, man. Yeah, yeah. and like Martin said, I know he's up here right now, but he said hey, the Martin, comment. Andrew. You know, this is going to put all the egos. This Amen. isn't the, you know, all the egos are going to be in check. This is a collaborative effort, man. And, you know, that's, I just don't, I don't, I don't understand. You know, I think people were just had their hopes on the sexy name, but this is like, this is a very good solution, man. I just, you know, it's just, you know, you go look at the offenses we named the Chiefs, the 49ers, you know, those are successful offenses, guys. <laughs> Those aren't offenses that haven't worked in the past couple of years, right? Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. You know, run game coordinators and pass game coordinators, you know, studs can come out of that in terms of the coaching community. Oh, I mean, yeah. go look. Everyone wants Kafka. No one wants the enemy. And I had this conversation with mm-hmm. – I'm going to have this conversation with you guys right now. Hold on. Let me get this out. Because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on about the enemy right now. Listen. <laughs> I want you to know, all right, my wife is Muslim. My children are being raised Muslim, okay? All right, so <clears throat> you look at the past 20 years. We're coming off a hiring of the first Arab Muslim coach in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear nonsense about this is color related with the enemy. I've been telling all y'all for a minute right now. He doesn't interview well. And I've been telling all of y'all. Oh, praise that me. I've been telling all of y'all. He doesn't interview well. And who's the candidate that everyone wants is Kafka. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what do you think? Guys, teams do a lot more research and talk to a lot more <laughs> to other executives and players in the NFL than we do. Okay. They all know. They yeah. all know. If 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 Kafka is coming out as the hot name, why do you think do you think that's just because he's the white guy? Mm-hmm. That's no man. That's not listen. You just got hired an Arab Muslim head coach in 2021 
So, and you know, I don't want to sit here and, and say now, do I think the enemy should have probably got the job in Philly over that? No, not knob. Mm. Yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> I do agree with that. I would have given the <laughs> enemy the job over that knob, 110%. Yikes. But, yeah. but it's not, I'm telling y'all, people are really under, and here's the thing. What were the color of the Texan coaches they hired, anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minority, yeah. Black Americans. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's not a, it's not about that, guys. It's get off of that with this. That is becoming a a scapegoat for this guy. Red flag should be going off for all of you. Okay, he is not. I listen. I heard two when I started getting sick. All right, I read a tweet. And it was from someone at ESPN. And it was the words in NFL circles right now is that the enemy is not going to get a job out of this head coaching cycle. And here we go. Three weeks later, that it's, I think it's the, the en- people are overqualifying the enemy because of the Chiefs. Yeah. That's why pe- that fans are. I don't want to say people are because NFL circles clearly aren't. Or yeah, he would have been know. hired. Mm-hmm. They know. They would have been hired. Yeah, they know. He would have been hired right away. Yeah. Okay. And Robert Sala was the best hire this it, available this round. Mm-hmm. And he just happened to be Muslim. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But guess what? White, green, brown, purple, yellow, blue, pink doesn't change the football mind, my friends. You want to hear another tidbit? Shout out to the homie ball game. You want me to put it out for y'all even more? Ball game has talked to someone who played with Eric B. Enemy. From my understanding, mm. from what Mr. Ball game was told, Eric B. Enemy is a meathead. There's some stuff out there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I There's keep some... telling, but I, my... I know I know he's got the character concerns. Yeah. My thing is. I, uh, from what I understand, people, he's not, he's a meathead. I mm. keep telling what, what do you mean by that reason? Like, he's, he's not, inte- he doesn't pick up things quick. He's not, yeah, he's not, he, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. He, he's like, you know, he, he was a running back, I'm pretty sure, right? He's like, like, you know, back in Colorado. yeah, he's a meathead, guys. You but get, no, listen, is, if you've been, if you've Patricia. been around athletes, yeah, but Patricia, what's Patricia your perspective? Has, Patricia has um, alleged sexual assault charges. He's a terrible leader and everything. I mean, and really, I, I mean, I mean, that's that. I, I yeah, but that's your one pushback. The one pushback is a the Detroit Lions made the hire, so I can push you back on that. And yeah. B, he came from Bill Belichick, bro. And it didn't work out, so it mm-hmm. shows that it might not work out with the enemy too. And he didn't I mean, work out, no. and he's out the freaking door, I, I, and I, I, they lost I, I their quarterback. That. I understand that, but it's still the stigma that a black coach, yes, can interview better. Sure. A white coach can interview terrible, also, right. and still get that shot. That's the mm-hmm. whole narrative that I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm, I'm tired. Bro, this is two years. This is two years. This is not been, one year. But, but this has been an ongoing thing, though. I mean, this is an ongoing thing, though. Yeah, but okay. But you got to stop. But see, here's my thing. What? How do you know he's not qualified? Who be enemy? Yes. How do we know that we, he is? I mean, like until like I hear. I mean, he's I clearly know. not. He would have I mean, been like, hired. I mean, until I hear. Hear that, like from I mean, I, that's a that's a that's opinion in any innuendo. It's who I hear NFL people say. The only thing I can go by is the opinion I hear. From so hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. So hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. A franchise needs to hire this guy just because. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. No, that's what I'm not. Saying. Well, the enemy is the issue here. I'm not talking about anyone else other than Eric Bieniemy. I'm right just now. I'm just using I'm just using the scenario that. If if we're gonna use that for example, let it be used to everybody. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Rick. Yeah, but I'm, Eric Bieniemy isn't everybody. I mean, I maybe one exec and say he's a bad interview. I don't want to hear about like backstage scouts, or whatever. Maybe one exec that has said that. So until then, that's nothing but hearsay. No, no, they're not gonna go public with it because they're of not that. gonna go public. Yeah, they man. would have. Because I, if you start, if you start, if you start saying, "Dude, you're the problem just, is further canon. That's just a stereotype that always is out. There yeah, but guess what, Damien? The stereo- I'm not saying the stereotype doesn't exist, but guess what? Maybe it doesn't exist for this guy, and he's a fucking meathead. It could be so. I'm not saying that. It listen, isn't. listen. Here's listen here. 
we're uh, now. I'm bringing in word of someone who's actually talked to Eric Bieniemy and played with Eric Bieniemy, and said he's not a smart football mind. Who played with Eric Bieniemy? So what? I'm supposed to hire him just uh, because? Ball game has a friend. Because I understand, that, and this is no disrespect to Mr. Ball game. I'm not disrespecting Ball, Mr. Ball game at all, but he has a friend. I'm just, I'm just saying in general. Yeah, but that's more than you have with Eric I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying on principle and murder. And, you know, I don't yeah, but, but you got it. But here you go. But principle. Just, but the, a, first of all, it's a business, so I don't know where you thought principle and merit exist. It means business. everything, it's, man. I mean, that's, that's not, brother, not, that's not for a, not for a lot of these people. winning. Winning that's, that's doesn't same, have to do with same, that. That's the same narrative that constantly goes around in the NFL. I mean, that's just my opinion. That's all. No, it's not. It's one guy. This I've never had. Ne- okay. I think they had to apply a Rooney rule. And okay. Even over uh, third round pick, okay, Damien, name the last coach. name the last coach. Hold on, name the last coach in the last two years. He's had over ten interviews and hasn't got a job. I and it's know. been strictly because, dude. Be listen, know. when you interview, do you do you understand, Damien? When you interview. They come to you and they're saying, "Give me a five-year plan for this team, dude." How do you know that five-year plan is an absolutely fucking shit and with no vision whatsoever? Well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Josh McDaniel was still was is still considered for head coaching jobs. He left the Colts at the damn altar. Like really? And he failed in Denver because he went. Be, because yeah, but you're forgetting. You see, you're sticking to you're sticking to color when you're forgetting winning. What is He's he won. He's what? What do you mean he's won? Didn't he win a Super Bowl last year? But he didn't win a Super Bowl. So what are you saying? Reason I'm not understanding it. Lies. Yeah, but okay. Uh, yeah, but you're also got a guy who he's won, right? He's how many Super Bowls has Bienemy won compared to Josh McDaniels? I'll wait. He's been in one and he won it. <laughs> okay. He might win on Sunday. Oh no! How many has McDaniel's won? I'm not asking. Be how many has he won compared? How many has McDaniel's won? He's won the majority because he's been the majority. He's been coaching probably longer than being to be also. Yeah, but see, you're you're thinking, <laughs> dude. This is a business of winning. You're I'm all of a sudden you're throwing. Yet, brother, you're you're saying you gotta forget winning because oh, you got a a guy. I'm here's not my thing. That, brother, I'm not disputing that at all. I'm just saying if the scenario was reversed and a white coach interviewed Ben. It wouldn't be that that stigma put out there. That's a known fact, and that's all I'm saying. I'm just leaving it at that, brother. I'm not saying that the enemy is deserving of a job or should get a job just because he's black. I'm not saying that if he doesn't deserve it, he doesn't deserve it. The only reason it came out why he interviewed bad and why it doesn't come out for other people was because people were wondering why he was getting so many interviews and not getting a job. That's why it came out. How many interviews? But okay, interview. I'm not saying that. I'm but that's the whole that's the whole point of he's not no, getting a job. You know, I just, I don't think, I, I, maybe I'm not explaining it right. The whole thing I'm saying that if be just like you used the time of kill reference, imagine oh, America no. enemy was white. That's all I'm saying. Would this be out there like that? That's all I'm saying, I'm Yeah, saying but Damien, it, it, yeah, but you don't but that's a hypothetical on. you can't yeah. answer because you don't know because we haven't that's had a coach not, in this position. We haven't had a coordinator in this position in the mouth because every year yeah, every, hold on, hold on. I'm not done. Hold on, hold on. Every every jaw how many jo- first of all, how many jobs has Josh McDaniels actually interviewed for? Don't know. I know he left the Colts at the altar. That's the only one that I know per se. No, Don't no, no. Ha- the anything. Colts, right? That's, that's yes, the sir. only one you could actually hold in, okay? The problem is, if if Josh, you're telling me, you're actually telling me, Damien, mm-hmm. that if, da- if he would have had 10 interviews and not got a job, just because we're living off hypotheticals here. You're placing hypotheticals. Let's place a hypothetical. You're telling me people wouldn't have wondered what the hell is going on with that interview but it process? That's the thing I'm saying. You can't say that. You don't know that. You don't know that because it didn't happen. Because we haven't had that opportunity to see a guy. You d- yeah, but that's a hypothetical, bro. We have what my you're missing my whole point. The enemy's hired. Let's include last year and this year. He's interviewed for about let's say about let's round it at about eight. Let's round it at about eight. No, let's go down. Let's go about five jobs, okay? No, let's go six. I like a round number. I don't like e- odds. Yeah. So let's say you got six jobs he's interviewed for, be enemy. Mm-hmm. Okay? Dude, 
I don't care whether you're white, purple, yellow, whatever, okay? If you wouldn't have got a job after winning a Super Bowl, after interviewing for six, rumors would have came out as to why you aren't getting jobs, bro. I understand that reason. I'm not. I'm, it's, it, I'm using a, broad, a broader perspective to just urge the enemy. The whole point I'm saying is reason. We know it's an issue with that, with race, because that's the reason why. The oh, I have no, no, no. I, I, oh, 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 yeah, 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 oh, oh. That's what I said. Maybe I, I never. Yo, but you're generalizing this. I was sticking to the enemy, bro. That's why I said maybe I was explaining it wrong. I'm that's saying I, no, no, no. I'm saying, bro, if there's qualify like Brian Flores and the stuff that was coming out from him. Was nonsense. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. That that's why I use. The but the enemy. If, but if, no. Um, but I'm telling you, bro. Listen, we can't start picking choosing of when there's smoke, there's fire to certain stories. And Bien, dude, you actually might have. All indications are you have a one of the worst interviewers in the last couple of years. Oh my. That's the problem, and here's the thing. Listen, you know what made me worry, bro? I watched the Eagles. Okay, y'all know I watched the Eagles a little bit. Mm-hmm. When I saw who the hell they hired, bro, <laughs> yeah, I said, "How the hell bad was <laughs> yeah. the enemy's interview, bro?" I That's said, crazy. "This must have been the worst thing in the world." And you know what it is, bro? That is actually possible, bro. That is actually legitimately possible. That guess what? I've been telling y'all since this started. That Andy Reid and Kafka I'm sorry, I'm in, in NFL Reed. circles, in NFL circles, NF, Kafka and Andy Reid have been credited for, for Mahomes. And here's the other thing. All these NFL circles, all these teams are going through the hiring process. Buddy, they talk to a whole hell of a lot more people that are connected to the situation Troy than me and you will ever talk to in our life. 100%. So so it got them to the interview process enough, right? Obviously, talking to those people got them to the interview process. The problem clearly was when the interview process came, the guy was, you know, the guy was not doing his, pulling his weight. And I, I yo, listen. Would I take Eric Bieniemy over the guy I saw that hired in Philly? Yes, one hundred and ten percent. But if I'm thinking that, I, I, I see. I'm not going to sit here and say Philadelphia is a racist organization, bro. I mean, I mean I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say that, bro. I'm not going to say. I'm not even going to say to the murder of, of his race. You know, you know. I'm not going. I'm not even going to say fully one hundred percent race. It just goes back. So a scenario I've used often, like if you're a billionaire and you have a coach, two coaches that have sketchy backgrounds or interview poorly, which one are you more likely to hire? The one that looks like you or the one that's not? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that. If well, don't ask me that question because I, I don't care if you're. I don't care if you're a smurf, that. bro. You, you can do the I'm job. But see, here's the thing. All. But but uh, but here's the thing. That is not you. The people who take that point. You're in the business of winning. Understand. 100%. Anyone who takes that site, they deserve to not only lose, but they deserve to lose the damn team, to, as far as I'm concerned. Like, if, if you're the... I don't... You take the best football mind available. I don't care what your pores look like, my friend. And that should be shared throughout the whole damn league. And it's a joke if it isn't. And I think, like... I do think there is a little bit of an old boys club. That's I would I would be absolutely mm-hmm. naive to say that mm-hmm. there isn't. That's yeah. where it but is. But I think there's a lot more. Like I I personally think if the enemy would have been the guy, Philly would have jumped all over him, bro. I really I really honestly do. Well, no, that not, not even not even not even not even yeah that's yeah yeah that that's why that might have been because they want to control their guy. You know what yeah. I would say, Damian. That's why the guy in New England didn't take the job. Damien, you know what I would say, uh, Thoris Patricia. Everything you said is one hundred percent true. I think he might have got a plus up because Patricia was, uh, just lived off Belichick. Yeah. Belichick, yeah, that's exactly yeah, what I was gonna say. Like that's he needs to, he needs to send Belichick. Like he needs to, you know, give him a handy every Christmas, bro. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like his, like his whole livelihood is gonna be because yo, I'll be this. 
the fact that they got rid of a black coach like Jim Caldwell, who's doing what he was doing mm -hmm. for Matt Patricia. Like I said, my pushback to you, Damien, with that hire is it's the freaking Detroit Lions, bro. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, now here's the thing. If Joe, my, my, cause my whole thing is guys, don't you think Joe Douglas would have hired him? You would think. Yeah. Joe Douglas is a damn good general manager and he hired the first Arab Muslim coach. That's true. And yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just sitting here and saying, guys, it might be like, I think, you know, the Texans you, thing, I, I think the Texans thing was the mess that is there. I don't think he wants to get in that Esther B thing. Because yeah. if everyone said um, a quote to his set, uh, Deshaun Watson said a couple weeks ago, Cal McNair needs to fire Cal McNair. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's David Esther B needs to go. Uh, that's a whole mess. I think, um, like Damien said, he's right about that. The Eagles want to control their guy. And that's why they picked a the puppet. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I, you know, I agree with Damien that there's an old boys club, but I think the enemy, I'm starting to think he's, I think he's slipping out of that guys. I think it's now, I think it's, and I don't mean when I say meathead guys, I don't mean these guys are dumb asses and they don't know their ass in the face. What I'm saying is, you know, they're, they're, comprehension levels and understanding they're a little bit you know behind the eight ball or whatever they take a little bit longer than other guys do to catch up whether it's a black mind a white mind brown mind that gets it right away whether a, you can have a white mind a brown mind a black mind a purple mind that gets it a little slower than the other guys do that's just that's nature that's just how it reacts and I think the enemy just might be one of those guys. I just, I don't think it's scary to me that the enemy didn't get it. He should have got a job on, you know, year two of the cycles and year three, he gets a job and then he flames out in a couple of years. Don't be surprised. Is all I'm saying. I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying. It's very like strange. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, he's not just, as, I don't think he's as smart. I don't think he's as good of a football mind as Brian Flores at all. Oh no. 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 At all. I, 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 you, uh -huh. Listen, Dan Campbell got hired and I considered him when he's I would have ran through a wall for him when he was our Yeah, but yeah, was, you know, the epitome of a meathead. But a meathead. Be, yeah, but that's yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about, a meathead. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. hey coach, what do you want me to do? Take that guy, push his face into the dirt. Yes, sir, coach. Yeah. You know, that's that that's me. But he, you know, and uh except the uh the what was Michael Agnew? He like ripped him apart. Like <laughs> I remember when they were profiling him on uh I think it was um we were we were up for the HBO and he goes, This guy, this guy's horrific. Yeah. Like he he's running in sand. This is this is horrific. It, it was like I'm like, oh my god, this coach is like destroying. You see, you see what he did, bro? He went What's back. That? He didn't get the job, and he went back, and he became a coordinator. And he obviously tried to get his aptitude and his, his where where he thinks it needs to be to be a coach. It's it's mind boggling though. I, when I heard the announcement, I was like, wow, uh, you know, like what happened here? And with the B enemy stuff. Now I do think it, the enemy is a little bit smarter than Dan Campbell. Let me put no, that. No, on. I, I, I'm just saying okay. it's it's very strange to me that he's going through all these interview and the Johnson thing was like Sala was hired quick. I mean, he yeah. went through one interview, he did a second one, and they didn't leave him out of New York. They grabbed his ass quick. Yeah. Um, and then the Funny, enemy they wanted was, to run through a wall for him. Like, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, tr true. Do you, do you think that Sala? By the way, hired... Damien, I want you to know I love you, bro. Oh, you know that, fam. You know yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't get to say. <laughs> and I do, I do, I do agree with what you were saying, Damien. I just don't agree with it with the enemy. Yeah, see, I, I see, yeah, I, I, I wasn't. It wasn't for the enemy per se. Yeah. It was for the whole. Oh no, I agree with you on the general. I agree with you, the old boy. The enemy's the enemy's but biggest I think issue is my that issue. he's under uh, Reed and Reed and he doesn't call the plays. That's that's the enemy's issue. He's under Reed and he doesn't call the plays. 
What do you hey, uh, yeah. just, um, well, go Sorry, it. Drew. I just wanted to give Drew. Drew, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to. I just be, be, yeah before the before uh, the night ends. Hey, man, we missed you. <laughs> and um, yeah, you're like a you know just an intelligent conversation with adults is hard to find sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> just in general, you know. And I missed you with the with the senior bowl and the draft talk. So uh, I'll let you, uh, you know, recuperate a little bit. Thank goodness for Rhino <laughs> and Pyro and Damien and all of them. Yeah, Josh. Well, it, w- w- yeah, and Josh, Josh obviously. Yeah. You know, we we helped ourselves out, but you're leading the charge a little bit with the tell. <laughs> and Dante, Dante helps a lot too, bro. He's he was killing it on his Twitter feed. That's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just wanted to say that. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. So, um, do you guys you, think that Eric the Enemy just completely? Hold on a sec, um, Joe B. Joe B. Mike, uh, the Enemy is involved, but he's not. He's he's not involved as in the passing game very much. It's Kafka, the calling. passing game coordinator. Uh-huh. It's Andy Reid is actually the play caller. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry. So, um, do you guys think that Eric the Enemy just completely just um? Is just going to look for a head coaching job in the NFL, or do you guys think there's a possibility that he may go to the college next year and see if he can get a job there um, due to how his um, interviews have been the last few years? Because, I mean, if you look at it, Steve, I think Steve Sarkeesian um, possibly could have got a head coaching job in the NFL if he didn't um, – Take the jobs at the Texas. Uh, at Texas, yeah, I, don't, I, don't th- I don't think he would have got a head coaching job. I think he would have got a coordinator job. Um, yeah, you make a very good point. I think that's it. You know what? That you know what, Damien? That yeah. should be his move. I think if I you don't get one too. next cycle, go to call it. Go to the SEC from and under. win. Get from mm-hmm. under. Yeah. Go, go to the SEC Colorado. and win, man. Ah, go to a good pro. Go to a good program. Go to the SEC, bro, and win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be a good move. Or maybe that, he's that, just waiting be to be move. head coach when Reed retires. For all we yeah, know, him, three years from now. No, Andy's only like 62, isn't he? 62. Yeah, but he's, he's not going to be there forever, though. The guy looks like he's ready to retire. Don't, you know? yeah. don't, you think, don't you think that's going to be Kafka, <laughs> that's, though? That's I wonder. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be being. I yeah. mean, he it's Andy's like, yeah, he's a great coach. Get him out the door. And I'm just kidding. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't know. It, it, it's it's very strange, and uh, you know, I get it. It's this one particular black coach, if he was worth his weight, I don't know about the interviewing thing. When I heard him speak, he seemed competent to me. Mm, he was in an interview. He, he seemed very competent. He must. Well, he's got I, the I don't history know. too. He's got a checker. He's got a checkered past, right? But that's history. ten years ago, right? It's yeah. It's but like Jamie says, so did uh, Patricia. I mean, the whole thing is yeah, it's just strange. It's just very well, strange. Well, yeah. uh, never mind Patricia and the enemy. Let's talk about Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, kind. <laughs> you want you want to talk, Damien? You want to talk about? You want to talk about white and black? <laughs> Michael Michael Vick and Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A couple, of, a couple now. of, a couple of dogs or a couple of rape charges, and I love dogs. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. dogs. I've grew, I grew up with six Dobermans. I love my do- doves, man. But I mean, what, what we're talking about, you know, Just which was, money, and, and I, be, and I, well, and that's what I believe. Vick was clearly, clearly in the wrong crowd and those guys were just using them for money. Yeah. Vic was not out here saying, Oh, let's kill some dogs today. Let's do that. No, nah, man, yeah. come on. And they gave him that time. And Rossesberger gets, goes over to change someone's uh, cable and ends up raping her. And like, and nothing happens. That, that is, that is white privilege in the NFL. But you hear you hear, that, yeah, you hear listen, Vic now. You want to talk? You want, if that was Deshaun Watson, mm. if Deshaun yeah, Watson would have been done with girls change with cable, his he'd be black ball from done. the NFL right now. Well, the federal government went after Vic pretty hard, so I mean, yeah, because again, charges. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. so yeah, poor Vic. So, man. reason what, what did you watch? Any of the Super Bowl? Do you get a chance to review anything? Senior Bowl? Yeah, senior, I'm gonna, yeah. Senior, yeah, senior Bowl. Yeah, I'm going to be having a Senior Bowl show uh, either tomorrow or Thursday, guys. 
Speaking anything of, stand out? Anything of stand world. out to you? I'm saving it all for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I, need, on. I, need, I need content right now, buddy. Okay. All right, uh, all right. Yeah, I, I got. I'll give you a hint. Mm. I'm gonna. I got 12 players I want to talk about, and I'm gonna talk about all 12 players. Do you okay. think? Do you think Flores hiring both coaches as the offensive coordinator had something to do with the Senior Bowl? With how well they coached at the Senior Bowl? I think yes and no. I think uh, externally, like I said, you know, you go look at a lot of the guys, they're gone, right? So yeah. they're not available. So it was just, here I am. And I said earlier, you know, I posed you guys a question before I got sick. Would we do co-coordinators at the Senior Bowl? And here we yeah, are. you said it. You named yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the uh, so... Yeah, um, I think he was impressed. I mean, you saw what some of those players did. I'm not going to name the guys I liked, but <laughs> you see what they did, and I think there's some players that they came away with also wanting from the Super Bowl 110%. Mm. So, yeah, I, I was hoping Carlos Bastion was going to go in the sec. Forget about that. No. My boy um, showed up, huh? My boy yeah, showed oh up. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a beast. Oh and uh, that, in, that that middle linebacker, too, he looked huge. The Brill? Br- Britt? Uh, Brit. Oh, KJ Brit. Britt. Yeah. yeah. I, I really love this play. Um, but, I, I, you know, Ryan and I talked about this on, on Larry's platform. Gotsy, it – it seemed to me he did a beautiful job in the Phoenix game. Why are we not worried or concerned? You know, this stems from the leadership of Flores. You know, he's putting a lot of faith in these guys and building his tree, his coaching tree. Yeah. Let's let's go. I'm not really worried yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, um, yeah well, don't worry. I'll talk about Demetric Felton. Um, you know, <laughs> I – so – they're you prodding know, you, reason. <laughs> people need to know, like, the, we are really, right now, we are the epitome of teamwork makes a dream work right now. Mm-hmm. And I love that, man. I love that, uh, you know, he's creating a, a in-house, day-in, day-out competition between Godsey and Studesville. Who's going to game plan better? Who's going to call a better game? That only benefits this offense and us as a franchise. Like that is, you got there is no room for complacency right now. He has created a room where you can't be complacent. If you complacent, you're out. Yeah. And that is, that is very, 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 very good. Like that is so undersold. Not enough people <laughs> are talking about. It. And shout out to Marino's go mm-hmm. five dollar donation. He says reason I love that. Quinn Backwood Psycho Center guy, homie, your thoughts. I have no idea what you're talking about, my guy. <laughs> so, and, and if I'm not mistaken, Tua had co offensive coordinators at Bama. Yeah, in two th- uh, and Mike Loxley in 2017 was brought on as a co offensive coordinator in 2017, yeah. 2018. Doesn't, doesn't Bama have triple the coaches that everybody else does? Yeah, I know. Every, <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And there's another thing, Flo, there's no dissension when the quarterback change was made. Why would there be any, I don't know. But there was fumble? from, from I think, from Gailey. And now that's oh, gone. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw yeah. a fifth wants to come back today. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I yeah, talking, talking about Merck's um, reason. When um, the kid from Wisconsin, I believe, he was talking about. Um, Bro, yeah, yeah. Who's that? Who is it? I think, I think that's who Marino – Marino's goat's talking about. The, the center from Wisconsin just broke his hand, I think. From Whitewater, Wisconsin. From Whitewater, yeah. Wisconsin. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be, oh yeah. I'll be, okay. I'll be, gotcha. Guys, I'll be talking He's about him, monster. too. Don't don't you worry at all. Tomorrow will be all, or the day after. I'm Hopefully tomorrow will be all Senior Bowl. We'll get into <laughs> it. And yeah. I'll take everyone's thoughts. Um, Yeah, but you're right, Marino. He was a beast. Um, But I actually have another <laughs> center that I think people should be keeping an eye on. So, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that too. Pyro, are you there, bro? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just biding my time. Pyro, <laughs> what the what the hell? Where did you come from, bro? Palm Beach player, <laughs> just sitting there. Yeah, man. Uh, 
It's just been a long, it's been a long month for me. <laughs> I just, I just wanted for the guys wondering. That's me with the, just pyro. Yeah, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, add, you gotta admin him. Reason he's just pyro now. Oh, excuse I'll explain later why what what happened. But anyways, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a, it's been a good couple of months, you know. Floor's got a uh, got uh, Dallas and Reese's cups. You know, I just felt <laughs> we should talk about that more. <laughs> you want? <laughs> and I, I just let me just say this real quick. I'm impressed with what Floor's did with the te- with the talent he was given with a short with a short couple of weeks. I think that really speaks volumes of how good this coaching this coaching staff really is mm-hmm. because they that. Given given uh new players, you know what all different personality. You never worked with them before. You only had like what a week. That's impressive to me. And you shut you shut out the other team in the first half. That's I mean, come on, guys. That right there is a highlight for me. Um, yeah, it was a good week for him. CB eighty three. Um, I never said Chan didn't call the um game. Uh, what was happened was Robert Brown was the passing game coordinator and handling the play calling heading into that week. Um, he was replaced by uh, Godsey, he, right? He was replaced by George Godsey because of COVID. Robbie Brown didn't travel, remember, because of the COVID. Mm-hmm. So um, basically, what had happened was the pa- uh, he became the passing game coordinator. And that was the game where he called uh, most of the game, from what I understand. Um, but Robbie Brown was not given back the passing game coordinator title after that game from George Godsey. It was stuck with Godsey um, for the rest of the season. And yes, Godsey did have a uh, he did have a hand in the play calling, specifically that Arizona game. Was from what I understand, from what I've been told. That was the game where Gotsi. That was the one game this season where Gotsi had his most control out of any game this year, and it was that. that was one of the most impressive games that we had from Tua. Yeah, yeah beautiful that. rhythm, but, right? But, that I shouldn't say for so Tua for the whole offense in general. Yeah, yeah. the offense was clicking, man. The offensive yeah. line still sucked, though. And and here's another thing, yeah. Yeah. guys. Here's another yeah. thing. You know what might be another thing you might see. Um, did you guys know that the New England Patriots have a red zone coordinator? No, really. So, red zone coordinators exist too, as well, guys. Mm. Um, so that is another possibility of something you might see, not with us, but moving forward in the NFL. Mm. Just these, I, I, these duties are getting broken up, guys. Right. It's like mm-hmm. college, it's the Alabama reason. method. It's the Alabama method. Exactly. Yeah. Also, yeah. Reason, uh, real quick, since you brought that up, do you think the, the, the whole co-offensive uh, coordinator, do you think one of them will take the responsibility of that role? I think it'll be shared uh, throughout the season. I think it'll just be a week-by-week basis. Um, mm-hmm. I want you to, you know, as a coach, Flores is going to say, you know, who I want you guys to get who's gonna game plan for me the best, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You install the game <laughs> plan as a collaborative effort, as a team, and then I think, you know, as the season goes on, Floros will find whoever he's most comfortable with calling the plays, or it may even be himself. And shout outs to Greer interviewing and uh, Najee. I know you guys seen that. <laughs> Yeah, what, about was, uh, what about Devonte? What about Devonte too? He was Devonte was what a uh, good true, kid true, to true, come true, there. True. Uh, this is Najee time. Sorry, but anyways, uh, I know you guys noticed that in Flores was interviewing him. Who's this Najee? I don't. I don't... Uh, Rhino, uh, you need to. Uh, Carter, Carter was falling. Carter, <laughs> Carter, <laughs> Carter looked Carter good, did. man. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, he Ooh, looked real good. That? Strong from North boy. Carolina. From North don't want to say I told you also. Oh yeah, that guy yeah. looked like he can. You don't tackle him with the first hit. That's all I gotta say. He must. He Sorry. must was playing for another team. I, I, <laughs> I mean, if you watch the Florida right. State game, he balled out in that game. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Well, anyway, about, about this guy? Flores yeah. was glowing about Carter too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So, 
Sorry. I mean, Sorry. you know, he's going about I, I, Pyro, I want Najee. I just don't know if this team's going to spend an 18th overall pick on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he yeah. might go earlier than that. People might go ballistic. You know how 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 this draft goes. Sometimes you go, oh yeah, he's gonna. What the hell's? There's a run on running back. There's only two oh, like. Uh, yeah, I, need, so I think you. I, I don't. I, I don't think to. Go to yeah, I don't want him to go to Buffalo either. Yeah, that's mm. what I'm saying. I'm here in Buffalo. Buffalo is uh, is targeting and the Steelers. Yeah, high on and the yeah. Steel and the Steelers. Yeah, in, in the Steelers, in the Steelers. Yeah, because he's Wait, he's we, literally he's a he's a he is a prototypical Pittsburgh Steelers back. We and might we think about it. That's why I say it, it, it makes sense because what were Buffalo missing during the playoffs? Yeah, a running, running back. Yep. McDermott came. Bunch of stupid right Ravens. The, <laughs> the Ravens <laughs> will take them. They 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 need a one, another one, right? No, I mean, no, got, I don't. No, no, it, no. I'm just saying. He's he's, he's joking. Like, he's know, joking. Yeah, he's joking. Because <laughs> they take, they take every year. Yeah, every year. Free, free agency. Yeah. Free agency is gonna tell us a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will. Because I don't know why. Uh, maybe I was onto something months ago, but a lot of people are tying Aaron Jones to us right now. They are. Did, you have yeah. a free agent show too, uh, reason coming up. That'd be great, a free agent buddy. Show? I had the I had the video done before I got the day I was gonna, the day I got sick, I was gonna be dropping it. So well, hopefully, like like the. Uh, so I'll be dropping it Friday. I'll be dropping it Friday. Sweet. Like I want Najee, but I just don't know if I want to spend an 18th pick on a running back. Man, it's such an expendable, short shelf life position. And guys, I mean, I love Najee. I, I love Najee, know. but I don't mm-hmm. know if he's gonna climb like what Gurley was climbing in Georgia. Mm. I'd be I, happy. I want. I want to. I honestly yeah. just don't want Bills to get him. That's that's my one fear right there, man. If he runs a four four, you better be sure he, he he's gonna be taken in the top twenty. Oh, most definitely. Well, I, you know what, Flo? I want Flo and Greer to love. Nanji, not just the fear of other teams taking. I want them to love him and utilize that talent, not like the the What's crap that, that you know uh, that happened with um, Gailey and and this talent. I think our talent could have been much improved with a little better. I, I called it. I called it. I called Gailey was the problem, and Rhino didn't believe me. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? Damn, shots fired. No, I think Najee's gonna. Run, I think Najee's gonna run a four four five. I four think four five. Okay, four four five ish okay. area. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just you know, my thing is, man, if we could just, I would actually trade back from eighteen into the early twenties and then snag him. If he's still there, he's not gonna, dude. He's not going to top ten, boy. He's not going top. Unless he runs up. Yeah, right? he's going. He's going top good, twenty. Like there are some very good offensive edges that, and players that you guys are not taking into account right now, man. That's the bait, man. Yeah, that's true. I heard Kadarius went in went into the first round. Now, all of a sudden, some draft boards, Kadarius, and I was like, wow. Well, because here's my thing. Listen, if I'm gonna take. Value and guys, I'm a draft guy. Y'all know that's my bread and butter. Javante Williams at 36. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To eight, to to Najee at 18. It just makes that value wise. That's a lot more sense to me. A <laughs> lot more sense, man. And at 18, you know what? I can sit here. I can if I didn't get Devonte or Panay or whatever. I can either get my receiver, or if I if I took Devonte or whatever at the top, man, there's a lot of good edges, man. Like there's linebackers. a there's, there's some linebackers that could help, man. Like there, I don't know, man. I, I just I, I just 18 for a running back is a little too rich for me, man. A little like you need I you need to be Saquon Barkley, bro. Like if I'm going. Like top fifteen, like yeah, I need Saquon Barkley type stuff here, bro. I try to prepare you, Pyro. I've tried to prepare you. Pyro is 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 <laughs> Najee Saquon Bar- Barkley to you? <laughs> well, a question, my friend. <laughs> but, uh, he's better. You know, let's, let's, he's I'm better. Gonna, I want to be realistic here, guys. I want to take Najee eighteen. 
You will not. I will not. And I agree with Rome when he says uh, uh, Aziz Ulajari from Georgia, I would take him at 18 over Najee Harris. I think he's fantastic. Mm. Um, if yeah. freaking if Damien Boyd's quitty pay sitting there, which he won't be, obviously yeah, I'd be all won't. over that. Yeah. I mean, I love that. I love uh, JOK from um, from Notre Dame. This is a really you know, realistic th- question. Th- Raising th- Sam Boyd, Mika Parsons dropped. So this off the field stuff, man. Mm. Yeah. Oh, if Mike, if Mike is there at eighteen, if Mike is there at eighteen, that's freaking disgusting value. I'm taking that all day. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't know how he drops to eighteen. Oh, uh, because so? uh, because, yeah. uh, because he's a report. Yeah, he's all he's, 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 he's got hazing. He's got hazing. He's got hazing. He's I know, got man. Hazing. He got he's got hazing out like multiple hazing. I hate to admit it. If Pitts dropped to eighteen, I would take the Gator and take Pitts on the team. I don't need a tight end. I, that's not no man. I don't hey, need. Todd. I don't need a tight end, man. That's not. That's not a necessity. It's freaking Todd. What's up, Todd? Todd, what's <laughs> going on? So, Todd, hey, I can uh, see cool. still being up in the booth though, and having Gotchi on the sideline too. Oh right? yeah, that's going to be a different change. Yeah. Uh, coordinators down on the field instead of the booth. Yeah. No, well, that's what I said earlier. That's what I th- yeah. That's what I said earlier. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, again, Kyle Pitts at eighteen. That's kind of rich for me, man. What are your thoughts on uh, Patrick? We Jones? got then. You got to get off Kaseki. Well, he's just, uh, well, not necessarily. Hey, contract year, his though. contract year. Um, I think uh, next year. Next year. Next year. Right? Next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but what do I need more? An edge, a linebacker, or a tight end? Oh, it. Ed- we're talking uh, about backer. people forget. Blind See, people backer. get. We're, we're talking about. You got to understand. What do you try to do with your draft picks, especially in the first round? Value at position, best value at position of need. Yep. Yep. Maybe he's just concerned that he's going to be depressed because for the like if I if I go if I get Devonte Smith or Jalen <clears throat> Waddle in the top ten, I come back with Kyle Pitts at eighteen. I'm not doing anything here. Like I'm True. just, you know, I'm not properly utilizing what I have in front of me, man. Um, yeah. And I, like I like I like Kyle Pitts. Would I be mad if they took him? No. But I don't. I think you know, the the, the they're only going to take one weapon. They're not going to take go back to back weapons. I don't think. No. And that that weapon is going to be their top pick. It's and then, you know, Todd might be right if they take Panay at. Three and then everyone's going and and Pitts is sitting there at eighteen. Now they can circle back to the weapon wheel. Then okay, well, and now, that, now, then but now you got to now you got to use them as a Chase Claypool. And I yeah, and, and, in the top fifty. And, and here's my yeah, but here's my thing, Damien, because I know you watch a ton of college. So reach me here, buddy. I'm having this conversation. I want to have this with you. Okay. We need boundary slot receivers. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Totally going over that and getting a guy that's a Chase Claypool type of mold. You know, we don't need that. No, we don't. You know, we, we got DVP and Preston. Preston. We already have that. Yeah. Backups like Matt Collins. You know, Matt, you know, we have those big type of bodies. True. We need yeah. Take the top off of a defense. Yeah. Stretch the field. Exactly. That's what we need. Hmm. We need yak receivers who can turn a, a, a yak six yak yard receiver. slant to a sixty yard touchdown. Yeah. Like, yeah that's why we're not doing Wilson. like a, a waddle in the first round, second round, come back and get Rondell Moore. Yeah, but that where are you getting us? waddle? I'm I'm not taking, Waddle's you're gone. Not, you're not taking waddle yeah. at three, buddy. Yeah. You no, know, no, okay. If you trade back, you know, say they're not trying. I'm telling seven. you right now, they're not they're not trading back. Get that out of oh, your yeah. mind. It's not and happening. Then, and then the only chance. Really why is that reason? Why is that? Why is that? Um, mm-hmm. Look at right now. Who's who are you going to trade back with? Yeah, Detroit, Detroit is out Detroit. of it. Yeah, Detroit killed everything. Yeah. Yep. Anything really. Yeah. The Panthers. Detroit, maybe. Like, maybe Detroit. Atlanta. Maybe. Maybe Atlanta. Maybe Atlanta. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Mark my words. Mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson. Who are you going to trade him back with now? Yeah. That's the, the Jets. No one's moving. No one's moving up for fields. No one's yeah. moving up for fields. The Jets no, dictate no. 
the only way, only way reason that it might be a shot, I'm just saying, just hear me out on this, that it might be a shot that Atlanta might go up to three if the Jets don't take Zach Wilson. That is a possibility because Atlanta might get nervous. Yeah, the because might Carolina yeah. might want to trade. That's but I just, I, I said to you, I just said to you, Lawrence and then Zach Wilson. Now who are we trading back with? Oh, yeah, no, that's what <laughs> I was just using that other scenario. No, yeah. I told and, you I, and, 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 Here's the other thing. The Panthers aren't going to trade up to three. It's going to cost too much. That's five spots. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's, they're, spots. Not, they're not They're They're not. not going to move up to three. They looked into, from what I understood, they looked into uh, Jerry the Stafford, the Stafford Wait, trade. Stafford, Stafford, I'm sorry. They offered them the eighth. Okay, that's an established quarterback, though. Right, that's a guy who can go back. right in and replace exactly. They're a young. Team. They need they to build right old, rule yeah. rules in the same position Flores is in. Yeah, you can't give up capital when you're a young team trying to build. And and this is what people, people need to get the mindset, guys. We're done accumulating, huh? <laughs> we're now building. Time to spend. Yep. And mortgage you pick your, your, your problem. The problem is from moving back to three to eight. Now what? The Eagles take a receiver. The 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 Chiefs take uh sorry, the, the Bengals take a receiver. You Lions screwed your own receiver. you screwed your own pooch. Mm. And also reason you, you literally you screwed risk, your own pooch. We and also also back. reason you, you risk the uh possibility of train, teams uh trading up ahead of you. Yeah, and exactly. Get something, cause they yeah. they know oh we got we're gonna get guys. Peak. Did you not see the tweet from Benjamin Albright after day one of the senior bowl? <clears throat> No, I saw a lot of tweets. It was and I quote, and I quote, you can pencil in Devontae Smith at three to the Dolphins. Mm. God knows. I hope so. I, God, I hope so, too. I hope so, so if Panay is there, there, we we still picking Smith? Uh, that's, that's a very tough. That's on yeah. them, not on me. That's a real that's, Yeah, that's a good I, you, What do I do? I take, I take Panay Sewell. Yeah, well, that, that would depend what I was if they, thinking about. Well, that would depend then, if they turn um, take. And Taylor then I move up. I don't okay. think we're gonna. I I, I got him. I'm a, you old talk about. I don't think we're gonna sign Taylor Moten for the mm-hmm. money he's probably gonna demand. What about the trade for what's yeah, his name from Rams? Rams. And he's on my he's on my free agent list. Would but you trade he's on my free Ramsey? agent list at the right price? Yeah. I Just, think I think you might see, bro. You know what? Maybe. I would be I listen to this. You want me to hit y'all with something? I would if I had like, like you said, put a hundred dollars down. I would put a hundred dollars down <laughs> on them moving up from eighteen as opposed to them moving back from three. Yeah, yeah. I think eighteen is a sweet spot that they move up. Yeah, um, that's true. What would they have to give up to move up to where you'd want them? To where I want who? Where would you want them to move up to? Well, I'm just saying, if they if they take Panaya three, I could move see them then trying to circle back up and move up. Depending for Waddle, depending where they are and for how, Waddle for Waddle or Smith. I think because I think you can you can get a you can get a tackle with thirty six. Guy, everyone's in the mm-hmm. mindset that we've been accumulating for the last year couple of years, but they haven't gotten the mindset that we might get aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's far fetched for us when it's really not. Yeah, I've maybe that, that senior bowl did that wonderful. I've done that trade scenario and moved <clears> up <throat> with the um, Panthers at eight, and I've got Devontae Smith and Panay Sewell, and I gave away a second round. For That's the thing, the right? Year. That's the thing. You you go you you draft Panay if you want. Like this is would be my strategy. Listen, so I sit back. I'm hoping the NFL doesn't like the size. <laughs> okay. So then what I do is I draft Panay at three and then I hope Jamar goes first. Then I hope the four two seven speed, which is what I think I don't think Jalen Waddle gets past the Eagles. No, and it's not. because that's what they need. And yeah. you know, I think now I'm hoping Detroit. at seven or eight I can Detroit or whatever, I can move back up. Because Detroit, Damien, is in the mind of accumulating Capital yes. right now. And yeah. Those two mm-hmm. picks that they, and those pick, that pick that they have next year for the Rams and the year after the Rams, barring yeah. injury with the Rams, that's going to be equivalent to a, a top of a, a top second round pick. 
because it's going to be late in the 20s. Yep. And then, and then you know what? And then I can sell all to y'all that, hey, some of y'all don't like his size, but Chase and Waddle were gone. I moved up for my guy, got him at seven. I was done in the, uh, in the top 10. All right, but yep. hey, who do we get to take the top off speed wise later on? Free agency. And Albert Wilson's back. And also, if and the Juju the... talk. Oh, go ahead, Damien. The Juju oh, talk. I, you know, I'm going to be right about that Juju thing. You watch. Yeah. You watch. I'm waiting for day one or day two of free agency. Dolphin signed Juju Smith Schuster. To a three or four watch, and then oh everyone's going to come back. Everyone's yeah, going to come back to me and say, "Oh, well, yeah, they're not going to target. They're not going to target receiver." And That's... I'm going to sit there and say, "Oh, watch them double up in the draft." Yep. I, I just oh. think it's too many slot receivers you can get from pick fifty to pick eighty-one. Oh, I could take Kadarius Tony all day. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. yeah. You know, even if you miss on Tony, seventeen reaches for Tony and gets him in the first. But I don't. Late my first. thing is. My thing is, I don't know if I see them taking two receivers in their first four picks. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I don't. I know we want to, but I don't know if I see them. Right. Right. It's all all if you know because I, I tell you that. that's a lot of cap. You know like, yeah, people it just is. see it. it it's a number on uh, everyone's you know draft network reason? thing. You know that's a lot of reason? capital for a team. Mm, I, don't gonna, I don't know. I don't know. if he's gonna fall this far, but the pick one sixteen, I'll take Demetric Felton from out of um, out of um, um, UCLA. Cause that's yep. the guy you can. That's a guy who has wiggle. He can he can make space. You can use him in multiple situations. And Flores can, loves jet Felton. You can you can you can use him in, in wildcat. And he's elusive in open space. That touchdown he caught in the senior bowl. It, yep. was, it was it was a little bubble screen, but him making that giving that that move, giving that wiggle, to freeze the defender and then just go. That's something you can't teach. And that's the running back in him. Now you put him at receiver. He's a better version of Lynn Bolton. Lynn Bolton transitioned from quarterback to receiver. This guy's transitioned from running back to receiver. It's like the same um, comparison as what Gibson did last year. It was just a flip. They played to the Redskins, Antonio Gibson. And Flo likes this kid, it looks like. Yeah. I can see, it's, I can see him. Buddy, I, I'm talk, I'll, be talking, I'll be talking about him. Don't worry. Um, just calm down, my, bro. On You're my out of control. Board, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Mike, Duke, Mike, 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 but you got to watch how the board falls. You know, I'm starting to get oh, actually yeah. irritated with, with, with these mock drafts because oh, it's yeah. never now how like the board falls. Yeah. Right? Um. So, Mike, who five dollar donation says, "Good to see you again, brother." Had no idea what you're doing, going through. Glad to see you back and healthy. Also, Harold Godwin, Kafka, Kafka came out and said that uh, he hasn't even been asked or. Inquired about, uh, inquired about being the offensive coordinator. Mike, it's over. Uh, Godsey and um, Studesville are going to be your offensive coordinators for 2021. Um, and, and you know, like, and again, Martin's naming another guy in the chat that y'all are going to see on my list on free agents. Curtis Samuel, another cheap guy who you don't got to give him juju money, but he makes a lot of sense. And the guy averaged like. 4.6 yards per separation per route. Oh, yeah. Easily better than what we had last year. Jesus. So, I, I think, and uh, shout out to Z-Man joining. What's up, buddy? Uh, um, nothing much. How you doing? Not too He's bad. How it's on your mind, buddy? What's up? Uh, just on the little OC thing, I don't know why people are, like, are going crazy over it. I guess it's not a big name, so, uh, you know. It's, it's whatever. I'm, I'm happy with what they did. I can see what they're doing. Give them one responsibility for just the run game and, you know, the pass game and try to combine the game plans. I can see that, what they're doing. But what do I know, right? But yeah. other than that, <laughs> the senior bowl was pretty cool. Uh, I liked a lot of the prospects. I'm not going to lie. I think I think we might draft Chad Surratt in the second round. I think – him being a quarterback, that gives him a little uh, extra. You know, Florida loves the smart, fast players, so that's a possibility there. Um, I see, uh, guys. I, I want nothing to do with Marvin Jones. He's not even gonna. He doesn't even make my free agency list, guys. Probably I don't want a thirty-one yeah. year receiver, man. Come on. Well, I, I yeah. thought you were gonna bite on that uh, reason. He, he mentioned Chaz Surratt. He didn't say nothing, man. You, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you know that's my boy. Chaz is my boy. I love. Uh, yeah, I love What's Chaz, up, man. Man? man. You know, I've been on Chaz for months and months. So all y'all know, I'm 
I guess a closet UNC fan because of Sam Howell. I don't know. But <laughs> um, yeah, Chaz is that dude, man. He's so athletic. I mean, it's just his, the, the instincts he has, man. From playing the posi- quarterback position to transferring over to the linebacker, he's just so instinctual. I used to be big. And, and yeah, exactly, man. I know he's a little bit raw, but I usually get a. Fr- I'm one of the guys uh, that's usually, I don't like the word raw. It scares me. And especially when I see it, like Gregory Russo scares me. And, um, you know, I look at, I look at Chaz and the rawness doesn't, uh, the, the rawness doesn't scare me at all. And and that's rare for me with a player. I just think he, I think Chaz is going to be a very, very good linebacker. Z man. I think, uh, I think this is a guy that if he's there and it makes sense, take him. Maybe at like 50, but not at 36. Oh no 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 no! And you no, know, no, for no. love his project, guys. Oh yeah, With yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed, man. You'd be our Fred Warner. Yeah, buddy, that guy was a stud, eh? Fred Warner. Oh yeah, man. man. I remember we were joking about Wes Walker that he might be available in free agency for us. <laughs> Just oh, thought no. that was. So- <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you never know. Go ahead. Want to go before or after Baker that year? I'm just trying to remember. I don't remember. Mm. Who? Did who? Fred did, Warner. Did Fred Warner go before or after Jerome Baker in that draft. Uh, that was that draft? Wow. I, I think so. I think it was him. It was Darius Leonard. It was, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think Jerome Baker went in the third round. God damn it. I think Jerome Baker. Uh, he went in the before. second, I believe. I thought it was a second. Yeah, Jerome Baker was second round. Yeah. Was Raekwon well, the year thank before? You, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Ron yeah, Raekwon was the year before. Me. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ron. Just wondering. Man, if we would have drafted want... a guy like that, jeez. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, he went yeah, 70. Gage probably would have cut him, though. He went 70, Baker. Yeah, really. 73. <laughs> But you got to feel okay. bad. They lo- first Willis, then Warner. Uh, Damn. Yeah. Talk about hitting them out of the park, but then you can't keep them in the park. <laughs> Damn, All right. man. All right. Freaking uh, Gase. People forget. I think people. For- I think I know some of y'all up here don't, but I think people forget how just dominant Patrick Willis was. Man. No, I think oh, I he was my was favorite oh, linebacker. Oh, my God. M. Ray Lewis were the two monsters in the middle. Oh my God, that guy was so special to watch, man. And he was that terrible. Was that's what that's what we're anyway. missing. We don't have that alpha. We don't have that. Le- we don't have that leader, man. We don't man, have, have that boom. Hey, did hey, yeah. didn't San Fran get another linebacker, and they lost the, lost him to the retirement early? Bolden or yeah, yeah, he the, he the B. Uh, yeah, the white kid, the, the white kid, yeah, the white yeah, kid. Uh, yeah, he was a short little guy too. Yeah, um, Thomas type of build. Uh yeah, ah. It begins with a B, Borland or something. Yeah, yeah Borland. Borland. It's Chris Borland. Yeah, was it Chris Borland? Yeah. yeah. Was it Chris Borland? Yeah, he went to become a doctor. Oh wow, that's cool. No, yo, and what's a lot, Todd? Todd, a lot of people don't remember him because of like, you know, because of um, well, obviously because he only really played one year, but the guy had. Like 110 tackles is one year as the yeah. taking over, yep. man. <clears throat> wow. Monster, man. And it was the same Monster. reason, the concussion stuff, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. It's, how, it's, how, it's how he was uh, tackling. He kind of led with the head first a lot. Yeah. That guy was a nasty, nasty hitter. But, but man, that's, 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 that's why I want both. Snake bit right there. Three middle it's, linebackers and you can't keep one. That's why I want Bolton. When yeah. I look at Bolton, I see a, a level of these guys in Bolton. I will be shocked if, like if, if I like I'm a, I'm with you. I like Bolton because he attacks the play quick. But I, if buddy, if, never mind the play. I've never seen a guy shoot. I'm sorry. Back to the best ta- back to back seasons is the best tackler in the SEC. The way that guy. Never mind the way he attacks the play. The way that guy attacks a gap, bro. Oh yeah. Holy. 
Jeez, he's man. all over the field too. Wherever ball is, you y'all know that's my is. that's my that's my number one. That's my that's my dude right there. Man. He really reminds me of Zach Tom. Tom. We do need a middle Yeah, I'm telling you, that was my comp tackle. for him. My comp for Zavin is Deontay Hightower. My comp for that for Nick Bolton is Zach Thomas. Zach man. Thomas yeah. Unfortunately, we got a coach who likes Deontay yeah. Hightower though. Yeah, yeah I, but I think th- we Collins think though. We think eight. though. Yeah, we think. But, that, that's what I'm finna but say, I do know. agree, Zavin fits the mood <clears throat> more. But man, Bolton, yeah. I hope he blows his interview out the Zavin water. Collins seems like I would love Bolton and a lot less physical. No physical. Form. Yeah, like um, Zavin isn't as explosive as as uh, Bolton to me, and Nick seems more athletic, much more athletic. Yeah, like he's his his first step is way quicker than Zavin Collins. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah, like it's not even close. Reason I got a question for you. Go ahead. Put yourself in the mind of Flores. Both of them are there. At I don't know whatever pick who you're taking. I'm taking Nick Bolton, buddy. Bolton. Because I, I think Nick like Bolton offers me. Hey. Nick, you know it's crazy. Nick Bolton might be a little bit smaller, but I think he's actually better in coverage. After mm-hmm. Charles Harris, I did not want another Missouri player here. And then Reason showed me the <laughs> tape, Re- Reason showed me some tape on him. Yeah. I was done. I was like, okay, bring him here. You uh, you, you don't like Mizzou no more? Not after Charles <laughs> Harris, but oh no. I agree. A little queasy. Oh yes, yes. And we could have had we could have had, had T J Watt. They had that they had that other rush. Pass rusher that the Denver took, and he was he ended up being no good. And mm-hmm. his, his thing, Todd, we pit we pit Charles uh, Harris right, yeah. and then they, and a few picks later, the Steelers picked uh, T.J. Watt, and I was oh, like, oh, hey, I know, right? Damn, we could have <laughs> had a T.J. Watt. Watt. We could have had T.J. I, I see what you're saying about T.J. Watt, but I don't really think he was a scheme fit for what we were running at the time. Shout out to Martin with the yeah, $2. but he's a better player. Five dollars donation. Yeah, yeah, he's a better player, but he says and see, uh, that that fits our mold now. Second, with how many second, players second, we second. have? Martin with the five dollars donation says we need a headhunter at safety. Paris Ford in the early second, please. Me, a lot of safeties yeah. I love. I'm down, buddy. A lot I think of we can get him, get him in the fourth. Third. Third. We Paris probably Ford's get him good, in the yeah, but that guy Grant looked real good. Fifth. Richie Grant, Grant, Richie Grant, Grant from UCF. Richie Grant yeah. mm-hmm. made himself some money in um, last weekend. Yeah, like Trevon uh, Morin. <sighs> yep. There's a there's a lot of good there's a lot of good um, safeties in this draft. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Matt Rule Matt yeah. Rule actually came out and said uh, when they asked one player he'd want on his team, Richie Grant was the guy he named. That linebacker from the uh, Ohio uh, showed himself too. Pete Turner Browning, Browning, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, I'm gonna, I'm like, gonna say, I'm gonna give y'all a tip. Listen, a guy I'm gonna talk about in my Senior Bowl video that y'all should be paying attention to is Demar Hamlin from Pitt. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that yeah, is, Hamlet. I think that guys, I'll give you my first little. That is, a, if you ask for as one guy he'd want, I think Demar Hamlin from Pitt is the guy he would take and put at safety on this team. Yep, he was on the other side of Paris Ford making plays. Yep. So watch him. He's a he's a he's a he's a great player. Um. So was he also at the Senior Bowl. No, he yeah, showed, he had, he had an interception. He had an interception. Yeah, he had a pick. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't really get to watch it like that. Yeah, man. Watch him. He, uh, nice. I, I think Flores glowed about him, bro. You could see like Flores' his eyes lit up about him a little bit. <laughs> you got uh, Raycon, Raycon Davis look in his eyes. Hell, huh? yeah. <laughs> he, he had, the, he had smoke, my Give him smoke. If you wanted a, if you <laughs> wanted a reason, lock from the Senior Bowl. Shout out to Rome Gray because I think it would be Demar Hamlin would be my lock. Mm, mm. And he's a true free safety, like Martin says, bro. Yeah. Is that McCourty 2.0? Yeah. Watch him. God, this, McCourty, is, this, this is who I think they want. Ooh. 
And I got to hold on. I got a couple of PayPal donations I got to get through here, bro. Guys. I can see him recording. Um, so shout out to everyone who's coming through on PayPal right now, showing some love. I got two donations I want to go through here. Um, I got a $20 donation um, from David Cousins. He says, welcome back. Reason you and your family are my prayers. Rhonda Cousins, thank you very much. I appreciate you, Rhonda and David. Um, and then I got a um, $10 donation um, from Esteban. Consistency appreciated. Glad to see you back. Also want middle linebacker at 18. Collins or Bolton at 36. Javante Williams. Des Fitzpatrick. Shai Smith. Anywhere hands and consistency. Um, yeah, they uh, they had Dre Fitzpat, Des Fitzpatrick, and uh, Shai Smith. Um, Shai Smith, I was going to talk about him, but he didn't make my cut for the Senior Bowl video. Um, Fitzpatrick, uh, was it Des or Dre? I forget which one, Dez, but I was going to talk. Dez, yeah, it was Des. Dez. Dez. I was going to talk about yeah. Des. Um, he just didn't make the. He was on the final list. I was going to do 10. I had to push it to 12. I had like 16 names. Cut it down to 12. Um, and Fitzpatrick and um, and Shai Smith just didn't make the cut. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they are they're another names to um to keep eyes on for sure. Mike Fitzpatrick. Yeah, man, that that one guy, Dierick or whatever his name is, that receiver from Western Michigan or something. Dwayne Esk Dwayne Deskridge. Es yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll be talking about him too. Don't worry. Oh, he made the cut. Okay. Oh yeah, he he <laughs> made the cut. He made the cut. Yeah, he, he, like, uh, he I like, like Nico Collins. Yeah, Nico Collins for you. I like him. I like Carter. I yes, like Nico Carter. Collins. I like his speed. I know I that's like Sharif Carter. Sharif's his boy. I gave him I gave him hell on him because, <laughs> because he didn't watch the tape on Nico. You just sit there Man. and look at the, the profiles. I'm like, yo, you gotta watch the tape. I don't wanna hear you giving opinions based off of just reading profiles. Watch. I but yeah, I like Nico Collins. I like Nico Collins. That that guy's gonna be one of the that guy's going to blaze wow. the 40. Sage disappointed me. Sage Surratt. Yeah, but I, I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't have like, like I didn't put him. He like, I've been, been on Sage Surratt for a couple of years. He's not, he didn't even sniff my top 10. Yeah. Shout out to Carl. So, but all again, my top 10 big board is based <coughs> off of what we need. Right. So, but Sage, you know, Sage is good, man, but you know, it is what it is. You know, disappointing me was my boy Jamie Newman. But he hadn't played in a year almost. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, he's knocking off the rust yeah. just like Tua did, you know. But it happens. I'm taking, to, you know, that might be better for us. I'll take him in the sixth or seventh. Are you kidding me? He'll have a pro day, right? I yeah. think he'll do better in a pro be. day. I think everybody's going to have one. And shout out to Kellen Mond. Mm -hmm. We all expected you oh, to yeah. take a massive leap um, after last year. You didn't take very much, but you showed uh, that you might be viable in the sixth or seventh as a developmental project, and that's okay. All right, guys, I'm going to dip out. Reese, I'll see you uh, tomorrow or here. the next day. Later, guys. Later, Peace. Later, Drew. Yes, sir. See you later, Drew. Ends up. Later, Drew. All right. Yeah, I'm only going to go um, for about another – 12 minutes here guys we'll hit at the two hour mark and we'll land it that's my problem with nico too is nico's fast as dickens not that great um off of his releases and separating right yep. so that's my issue with them and there's another thing i want to talk about actually too you know when i saw that benjamin albright thing because a lot of people are asking you know what is this going to mean in terms of you know not only um in terms of uh you know, what is this offense might look like a little bit now? Is it going to change much? Um, and I don't think you're going to see, you know, I think you're going to see a fusion. Um, I, I don't think you're going to see a ton of different, you know, you're not going to see earth shattering stuff brought in, yeah. but I think what you're going to see is a lot of the same stuff in terms of, um, you know, you're going to see that those wide sets, three by one sets, the run pass option, it's going to be utilized. The screen game is going to be back, but it's not the way Chan was using it. Um, screens. 
<laughs> you know, you're obviously gonna, and I'm talking about just the passing right now, guys. You know, you're gonna see all these different things brought in, and one thing to me that stands out, um, that not not enough people are really, I think, um, paying attention to right now. Um, let me just bring up my notes here. Um, did you show uh, a lot of better play call now, so I can tell you. I think you'll see more aggressive. No more draws on third and long. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think we'll Why? see more crossing routes? Oh um. Uh, you know, I think you're going to see more Alabama concepts now brought over. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff that Imagine stuff that, that two was already familiar with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with Steve Sarkeesian, he he used to use like a lot of you know rub and crossing routes and whatnot to you know create you know manufacture space for his players and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It would probably help us defend them better too. Oh yeah, for sure. And yeah, you know, I think you're gonna see. Here's the thing: what's gonna be key, guys? I think you're gonna see the motion that I want. Now I'm not a you know I like pre-snap motion. You need it. You need to tell whether man zone, etc. Right. <laughs> My thing is now I think we're gonna see a lot more 2020, 2021 motion in terms of motion at the snap. And what you're gonna see now is for me at least, you know, this this team, right? It's already in place where you know the terminology's there. That's 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 key. Now the problem is, for what people might be wondering, what I'm talking about is when you got a perfect example. If we're gonna draft a guy like Devonte Smith, all right, Devonte Smith, go look at how he was used at Alabama. That was a primary motion man, mm-hmm. right? Because of yeah. his size. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to try and create releases off easy releases off the line for him, so he can start stemming and stacking his routes. Mm-hmm. And what happens is when this when when this you're gonna see a you're gonna see a lot. We're gonna I think basically what I'm trying to say is I think we're gonna be a lot more busier at the snap. And I think you know the motion at the snap. Rhino knows I love motion at the snap. Mm-hmm. You can set up keys that can lead to false keys. You can yeah. catch teams. And I think that's key. I think you're going to see us moving towards that. Mm-hmm. You know, I still think you're going to see the three by one splits. But now I think you're going to see more so the chains are off that Gailey had where go ahead, utilize mismatches. It's not about showing off your 40 year old quarterback anymore. And Devontae Smith. Is going to be that's why I think he's another real possibility of them just taking him at three. Because if they want to go to that offense, Devontae Smith is going to be an intricate part for it. Because yes, he is going to run a 4 4 4 4 5, probably, but it's not going to matter when you can motion him and move him around the field and start creating. Because what you're going to do is if I'm going to start motioning him and I'm going to have Preston and DVP out there, you can, who are you going to double? Hmm. Who are you going to yeah. double? Go yeah. ahead. Go, go double DVP. I'm fine with that yeah. because now you're giving Preston one-on-one or I'm getting a motion matchup with Smith and he's man-on-man. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be your number one guy on Devontae Smith. It's going to be your number one guy on the outside taking up DVP. So mm-hmm. we're going to start being able to create mismatches through this offense, I think. And that's what I think not enough people are talking about, what this collaborative effort is going to go thwart, towards. It's going to go. That's why they're separating the passing game coordinator duties and the running game coordinator duties because they're different things. Mm-hmm. And now – when you have individuals focusing on different aspects of the offense, all we have is a meeting of the minds for all these different pieces, all these little cogs of the wheel to keep it moving. 
And I think we're going to see a better and a more, you know, not in terms of more. Uh, when I use the word complicated, I don't want people to think harder to learn, but harder for defenses to pick up on. We're going to have a more, com- I truly believe we're going to have a more complicated offense with Charlie Fry, Godsey, and because you guys don't, you, we would all be naive and dumb if we didn't think Charlie Fry isn't going to have input on the situation because he was just a offensive coordinator. He's exactly. seen stuff that's worked. He grew with Sua. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I man. truly think oh, this oh. is going to be you got multiple guys, you got basically multiple coordinators <clears throat> in there. Yeah. yeah. And because of that, I think we are going to start seeing a more advanced, caught up offense to the Shanahan's and the McVeigh's. Now, is it going to oh, be on man, their I'm level? Excited. Is it going to be on their <laughs> level? I'm not going to sit here and say that, but I'm mm-hmm. going to sit here and say that I think that's what they're trying to work towards. Yeah. And oh, that, when you look at this, what it makes sense. Ooh. Like Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith excites me because of the motion. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rhino knows how much I love motion at the snap. And this is the new age. And I think we are going to be a team that's going to start doing things that, you know, not only do teams haven't seen us do, but they're going to have trouble picking up on just like the way we thought <laughs> the sky's exotics. Yep. The way we design the sky's exotics on the defensive side that confuses the quarterback. You don't think we can do that on the offensive side? Oh, to a, to a linebacker or to a safety? I'm hey, excited, on, man. Because last year when I was watching you call the game, Freaking reason. you were calling the plays before they were snapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it was very predictable the play calling with with yeah. uh, Kaylee. I mean, the the jets the jet sweep alone <laughs> should tell you how bad the play calling was the whole year. That that jet sweep on the goal line summarized oh my the God. offense the offense oh, all year. Man. That's all for news, Darth Vader. Sorry um, about that. Listen, God, uh, you didn't have to. First of all, first of all, you did not have to donate ten dollars for this, my dude. Lot of all, like, please take this back wow. if you can, my guy. Um, please take this nine ninety nine dollars back, my friend. Um, Darth says, "What's up, Reason? Today is probably the worst day of my life. My mom passed away this morning oh, due to man. COVID. Oh, Everybody is oh. living to life to the. F- I'm living life into the fullest and one day at a time. <laughs> like, I am so sorry, Darth. Man. Like, I am. Yes, yeah, bad news." Like my dude, I am. COVID, I, no joke. I'm so sorry, man. God, um, to you and your family, man. Not you know, man, I've, man. you know, you've been one of my biggest supporters and one of my day ones, and I'm literally crying mm. right now for you, dude. Um, <clears throat> like, Darth, I am so sorry, man. You know, DM me. On Twitter, I will give you my phone number. If you need me, man, I want you to text me, okay? So I want you to DM me at the underscore real underscore reason, man. I'm hurting for you, bro. Like I'm legitimately crying, dude. Yeah, like awful. I'm not I'm not lying, bro. I'm I'm crying for you guy. And I, I I'm so sorry, my friend. I apologize and nothing I can say or nothing anyone can Say up here, we'll, we'll, we'll bring her back. But my friend, all I can say is I don't know how, I don't know when, but the sun will shine on you and it will brighten your life. And your mother will look over you and she will guide you down the path of life and towards greatness. She is there for you every step of the way. And I apologize, and I'm so sorry from the deepest, deepest reach of my soul, my friend. I hope you are okay. I want you to DM me on Twitter. I'll send you my text message. I'll send you my phone, num- my phone number. Text message me, my friend. I appreciate you, my guy. I'm so sorry, my guy. I am, 
I am just absolutely heartbroken. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, man. Yeah. L- losing a parent is, oh, yeah. is, is hard, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, I mean, somebody no that close to you is gone. You, you, may, you may have lost a family member, but all these family members are still here for you, bro. Yeah, yeah. I love you. Yeah. Man, anything you need, we all love you. We all got you, man. Anything you need, man. Please do not hesitate. I'm so sorry, my friend. Uh, uh reason real quick. Can you mod uh, Darth Vader? Uh, yes. I didn't even know that he wasn't. God knows. That's... That's what I love about this platform, though. This community is just so close and tight-knit that, like, yes, we talk about sports and all that, but we genuinely care about one another. Mm-hmm. And we we have genuine concern. That's what I really love about every one of you guys up here and all you guys in the chat. So, I, we'll I, all I'm meet just, one day. We'll all meet. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Rhino. Mm-hmm. That's right, brother. It'll happen. Gosh, man. That's... Oh. Yeah, man. This is... Fucking COVID. <laughs> exactly. Fucking COVID. God, man. COVID. That's... Ain't no no joke. And people still playing around with it. Yep. I don't want to hear any of that conspiracy shit ever in my comments, man. Ever. Oh. And now, how it may have got out may have been a conspiracy, but it is real. It's real. And it is hurting families, and it is mm-hmm. breaking people's hearts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. 100% right, bro. 100% right, bro. Oh, it, it, it sucks, man, that she had to go out that way. You know, blessings to you, Darth Vader, man. God, but she, she always Damien, be with Damien, you, she always Damien, be with you. I, I've said before, I'm Muslim. You're a pastor. Mm-hmm. I want you, please, to say a prayer on air for Darth Vader and his family, my friend. Please, most definitely, everybody hearts and minds on the Lord, Father God. We come to your throne boldly but humbly, Lord. We ask you right now to be with our brother, Darth Vader. We bonded with him from being Dolphin fans, but it runs deeper than that. We need you to be with your son right now, Lord. His mother is gone. His mother is gone with you, Lord. His mother is resting with you, Lord. So right now we ask you to bring Darth Vader comfort. We ask you to be with him mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. We ask you to be with his family, Lord, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Comfort them, Lord, when they need comfort, Lord. Put a smile on his face, Lord, when he's struggling to smile, Lord. Give him the strength to keep pushing on, Lord, when he doesn't even feel like moving. We ask you, Lord, to comfort his heart, Lord. Comfort his spirit, Lord. Uplift him, Lord. Let him be able to smile, Lord, and reminisce on the times with his mother. Let him be able to live life for you, Lord, but most important, live life in the memory of his mother, Lord. And We're asking you this, Lord. We're asking you this, Lord God. We're asking you, Lord, what Whatever religion he is, whether it's Christian, Muslim, whatever, Lord, you are the true and living God, Lord. And right now we ask you to bless our faith. We ask you to bless his family, Lord. We ask you to bless him in everything he encounters, Lord. But most importantly, Lord, let him know that his mom loved him. And we know he loved his mom. And we know that his mom's love will live eternally forever, Lord, in his heart, in his mind, in his spirit, Lord. Give him that strength, Lord, when he's weak. Let him be able to call out on you in the midnight hours when there's nobody else around, when he needs you, when he's thinking of his mother. Give him that strength, Lord. We're counting it done for our dolphin brother. Amen. 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 I love you, Amen. brother. You know reason? I don't mean, you know, I just was thinking about, man, because I lost my auntie. was like my mother. <clears> and, I, and I still hold her, um, her contact in my phone, and I would text it. And, like, I got a text message saying hi, and that was it. And she was passed. You know what song I was thinking about, Reason? Hmm. Off the, um, our boy, um, J Electronica, that, that song on the new um, album. You know what <laughs> I'm talking one? about, Reason? Um, the, the way he talked about losing his mother. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, man, like, I can't imagine that feeling, my brother. But always remember, she's with you. And persevere mm-hmm. on. She's always going to be with you. She's always going to be with you and continue to be the man that she raised you to be. You're a good brother. I know you from the Dolphin community, but it's bigger than that. 
man. Just continue to hold on, brother. Love you, man. Fins up. And that's legit for everybody, man. I love y'all, man. We might have different opinions and everything, but at the end of the day, we brought the together to the Dolphins, man. That makes us family, man. And that's real, man. Rhino and Reason, Pyro, P P TJ, y'all know how much I love y'all. And, like, that's real for all y'all, man. Like, fins up, man. God Mutual bless you, brother. Appreciate it's you, right, Darth Vader. Good job. Appreciate Always, you. Man. Uh, no, it's no problem morning, brother. That's real. It's yeah. no problem morning. Don't never let nobody put a time table on your morning. That's mm -hmm. real, man. Love mm -hmm. you, brother. Tell you, man, if any girl you get with ever, you know, try to talk you down when you, you know, crying about your mother or something like that, that's, that just shows you that she ain't the right one for you, bro. Move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. All right, guys. I usually do final thoughts, but I'm gonna end it right here. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and I will be back. Um, hopefully tomorrow night I'll be right back here, and we'll go over the Senior Bowl. Um, and then, Darth, I love you, homie. I'm thinking of you. You're in all of our thoughts and prayers tonight. And please, I will get. I saw that you said you messaged me on Twitter. I will get to give me a little bit. I'll get back to you. Um, but we will talk tonight, my friend. Okay. Um, listen, everyone, cherish the people you have, love everything around you, look for the positive through the negatives. That's all I can say. Tell tomorrow, guys, I will be back tomorrow now. Fins up all day, every day. Fins up.